distinguished former president of Iceland, chairman of uh, Arctic uh, Circle, His Excellency Grimson, Mr. Grimson, excellencies, distinguished guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very glad to be back to the Arctic Circle Assembly again for the fourth time and to uh, meet with uh, all of my uh, friends, new and, and old. Today, I would like to uh, share some thoughts on the relationship between Asia and the Arctic. The Asian continent, Eurasian continent, and the Arctic Ocean are bounded by each other, shaping their respective natural environment into being. The major rivers originating in the Asia, such as Itaish Itesh River, the Obi River, and the Yanise River, keep streaming into the Arctic Ocean. In uh, each winter, the freezing cold fronts from the Arctic blows all the way down to my hometown, Beijing. So it is fair to say that Asia and the Arctic are never far away from each other. Under the amazing power of nature, they have frequent interaction and are deeply influenced by each other. At present, due to climate change and global warming, transregional and global issues in the Arctic become increasingly, increasingly significant which are having and will have a far-reaching influence on the Arctic area. The massive sea ice in the Arctic is melting in summer. Speculation is, uh, even, even says that non-ice summer will appear in the Arctic uh, marine area by the middle of century or even earlier. On the one hand, melting ice in the Arctic has led to global issues, such as accelerated global warming, rising sea levels, increased extreme weather events, uh, which need joint efforts from relevant parties, including nation countries, to address. On the other hand, the melting ice also provides economic opportunities for the development of the Arctic including for the Asian countries. Ladies and gentlemen, as a nation state, China is an important stakeholder in the Arctic affairs. Promoting the sustainable development of the Arctic is the fundamental goal of China's participation in, the Ar in Arctic affairs. The impact of climate change on the Arctic is much more significant than that, than, than that on the other regions of the world. The outstanding contribution of China in the in climate change field will effectively promote the sustainable development of the Arctic. Guided by the philosophy of uh, innovative, coordinated, green, open, and shared development China is pursuing high quality growth and following the path of green, low carbon and sustainable development. In uh, uh, 2018, China's CO2 emissions per unit of GDP dropped by 45.8% from the 2005 level, or a reduction of around 5.8%. 26 billion tons of CO2 emissions, exceeding the target set for the year. In the same year, the share of non-fossil fuel in primary energy consumption reached 14.2%. China will faithfully fulfill our obligations under the UNFCCC and the Paris Agreement and realize as scheduled its national determined contribution targets. Marine debris, in, in particular microplastics, is a severe challenge 
with respect to environmental protection in the uh, Arctic. China attaches great importance to reducing marine debris in the Arctic and take actions for this purpose. In, uh, 20, in 2017 and 2018, during the 8th and 9th Arctic scientific, scientific expedition, we carried out monitoring and microplastics uh, on, on uh, microplastics in uh, seawater and sea ice and sediment. This helps us to get a pre preliminary knowledge of the existence and status of marine debris and microplastics in the sensitive areas of the Arctic. Collecting valuable monitoring, uh, monitoring data for the, for the uh, marine debris management in the Arctic. Devoted to the protection of the fragile ecosystem and uh, biodiversity in the Arctic, China also actively participated in the negotiation on the agreement on a prevention, on, on the uh, agreement to prevent unregulated high seas fisheries in the central Arctic. Ocean. The conclusion of the agreement is an important progress of the Arctic rulemaking and governance, as well as a good case of multilateral governance of the Arctic, particip of the Arctic participated by the Asian countries, including China, Japan, and Korea. It has profound influence on regulating high seas fisheries in the Arctic Ocean and on protecting living resources on the, in the Arctic. Uh, up until now, uh, 10 negotiating parties have all signed this agreement. China has started its domestic procedures to ratify this agreement. The agreement is expected uh, to be uh, ratified in the first half of uh, next year. Ladies and gentlemen, while the sustainable development of the Arctic calls for contributions from Asian countries, the development of Asian countries is also closely related to the Arctic. Uh, in this May, more than 500 persons from different countries gathered in Shanghai, China, to attend the Arctic Circle China Forum. Among others, the, attendants, att the attendees uh, include officials from Arctic Affairs, for the Arctic Affairs, diplomats in China, uh, specialists and scholars, business representatives from all over the world. They have extensive talks. They had extensive to talks on Polar Silk Road science and the innovation, transport and investment, sustainable development, and environmental protection, as well as the Arctic governance. The forum itself, as well as the items of uh, discussion, uh, both fully displayed the close relationship between Arctic and Asian countries. Located in the Northeast Asia, China, Japan, and Korea are situated in the area where uh, which most must be passed when getting through the Arctic shipping routes in and out of Asia. The three countries have uh, common concerns with respect to uh, environmental protection and development in the Arctic. In this June, the fourth trilateral high-level dialogue on the Arctic were held in uh, Pushan, uh, Korea. The three, the three countries uh, comprehensively reviewed the fruits achieved in the previous three rounds of uh, uh, dialogue, looked ahead to the direction of future cooperation, and discussed how to strengthen the cooperation to, uh, of uh, experts from the three countries. Ladies and gentlemen, in the age of globalization, the future of the Arctic concerns the interests 
of Arctic states and the well-being of all Asian countries. China is ready to cooperate with other Asian countries to uh, jointly uh, build a policy road uh, through conducting international cooperation to the last extent we could jointly contribute to a brilliant future of Asia and the Arctic. I thank you all.